Right, welcome to this review for the new Sisters of Battle Codex. This is the book that comes with the collector's set. Uh, maybe if you get this codex later on, if you haven't been able to get a hold of the set, uh, the, the front cover will be different, but other than that, I think the contents are going to be exactly the same. In this video, I'll do a full review, so we'll cover all the, f we'll flick through the fluff and the artwork and so on. Uh, take time to appreciate that. Uh, and then we'll get into the rules, special rules, stratagems, units, uh, weapons profiles. Uh, Warlord traits and so on, all of that will be covered here in this video. It will be a Tactica uh, review as well, to give you sort of my idea if I was, if I was to collect these, uh, what seems to work well, what looks good, what kind of options I'd go for uh, as well. Uh, thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy ahead of time, uh, and then check out gamingfigures.com for your 40k at a discount rate, along with other gaming systems, uh, all available from them as well. So, not the biggest of codexes here, but uh, good enough, it's not, not a thin one, there's the smaller ones around. There's the artwork on the inside cover, which we'll see. Let's give you an idea of a, just from an artwork point of view, and if I was to paint these, this is like a colour palette here. It gives you immediately uh, a colour scheme that you can be thinking of to, to work to. So I'm thinking not, not a glaring red. But uh, a deeper kind of red here for the Sisters of Battle. It's not, it doesn't stick out and, and stand out too much. Flames and fire and that glow. It's very sort of, it's a Roman Catholic kind of feel to it. Uh, that kind of medieval sort of style. So uh, the red, burnished sort of gold, flames, candles, all that kind of uh, feel to it just there. There's bones in here as well, relics of the saints and so on. So that's the kind of colour scheme uh, you're looking for. Ancient, uh, but not decaying, not rusty and so on. You wouldn't push it that far, but sort of ancient relic kind of feel to it. And so Games Workshop trying to reflect that in the colour scheme. You see the red here on these models. It's there, but it's not dominant if you See what I mean? Yeah, they've, they've done work on the flames just there. Oh no, they're fighting against the Tau. Oh dear. <laughs> I was expecting chaos here, but they're after the Tau. Any enemies of the Imperium they'll happily fight against. Yep, and they are uh, showing no mercy to the Tau just there. Warriors of the Faith. The Imperial Creed, so your background information. The Age of Apostasy. Great fluff and narrative and theme with the Sisters of Battle, very, very strong with that. Uh, the Army of the Ecclesiarchy. Hierarchy of the Adeptus Sororitis. War Gear of the Sisterhood. Famous piece of artwork there. The Order of Our Martyred Lady writes the different orders here. Order of the Valorous Heart. Order of the Bloody Rose. So if you're not keen on the standard colour scheme, you've got these options to paint up one of your own order, paint up one of the different orders, or indeed you could invent your own. Order of the Ebon Chalice. Order of the Argent Shroud. Order of the Sacred Rose. And Orders Minoris. Right, so there's others here as well. Order, order of the Glowing Chalice. Order of the Fawn. Order of the Iron Veil. Order of the Ashen Shrine, Order of the Wounded Heart, and Order of the Golden Light. Looks like a golden colour scheme you can go for with the armour just there. Right, interesting. So for example, if you're doing perhaps Custodes, and you wanted to keep the gold theme running, you could run uh, Order of the Golden Light sisters next to them. Interesting. Non-militant orders. What an incredible piece of artwork. Wow. 
I'll see if I can zoom into this one. I've not seen this one before. Yeah, just would it be worth zooming in? They've uh, beaten back the Drakari here by the looks of it. Look, the last right's been given that kind of start. Incredible. Wave upon wave of Xenos beset the Basilica of St. Char. Yet even as hope faded, even as the casualties continued to climb, still the order of the Bloody Rose stood firm, boldened by blade, with fire, with faith undimmed, they fought back the foe. Incredible stuff. Yeah, incredible artwork, brilliant artwork, that. So, yeah, Orders Famulus, Orders Hospitaller, yeah, very Knights Templar, Stargunner, other non-militant Orders. It's all the background information for that, it really helps you build your own narrative, you can read into that, invent your own, and so on. Ecclesiarchal uh, Parishes, ha, <laughs> Parishes. <laughs> okay. Wars of Faith. In the timeline, I think, yeah, all that's gone on. Look at that, wow. Have a great piece of artwork here as well. So, the games are actually a lot of effort's been put into this. Fighting alongside the Iron Hands, I think. Different unit types then Canon S, uh, Junif Eruta, Celestine, Living Saint, already re uh, re released in plastic, brilliant model. The Triumph of Saint Catherine. Battle Sisters. There, there are Sisters of Battle games on the channel. If you go way back, uh, not way back, maybe a year or two, you'll find them on the Challenge of Scorpion games. James Otero from Seed Studios uh, ran Sisters of Battle, and he features in a, a couple of Sisters of Battle games. Uh, you know, pure Sisters of Battle being used in those battle reports. But that would be. I think 7th edition uh, rules. Angelic Hosts, Repentia squads, uh, then Celestian squads, and then Imagifias, however it's pronounced. All the best for trying to pronounce that one. Some names I struggle with. Hospitallers and Dialogi. Dialogi. Interesting. Transport vehicles. Exorcists, yeah, I've faced those a number of times. Minister and Priests, Ecclesiast Ecclesiarchal Warriors, which have already been redone in plastic as well. I, well, I think actually, in some of the specialist games that Games Workshop have done, Acro Flagellants, Engines of Penance, and then here's your models here as well. That's the Battle Sister of Bulk, and that's that special edition model, Canon S. With different options. Seraphim squads, very cool, very unique. Uh, to Sisters of Battle. A Dialogus model just there. Standard Bear, Hospitaller. After oh, a wound, there's a wounded sister here being treated. Brilliant model, fantastic. Battle Sister squad. Sister Superior. Battle Sister with a Heavy Flamer, very cool. There's your different colour schemes. It's Order of the Argent Shroud, a lot of silver, so you can fight along perhaps next to Grey Knights, for example. You can use those mixed in. A lot of white here, this one. Battle Sister of the Order of the Sacred Rose. We'll have a crossbow here. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Celestine of the Order of the Golden Light, that's the golden option just there. Grey armour here. Again, gunmetal, sort of silver, dark red black. Loads of colour options here. Here's the vehicles. Full on stained glass window at the front. <laughs> that one. An immolator. Totally over the top here. An exorcist with heavy bulge and exorcist missile launcher. Somewhere. Oh, it comes out like that. Out of the organ tubes. <laughs> there. Interesting way of doing that one. Penitent engine. Preachers, older models here. Difficult Assassin, Crusader, and so on. Defenders of the Faith, that gives you an idea of what an army can look like. There's a mixture of squads, whole variety there, Celestine. There's a mixture of the vehicles being used as well. Battle Sister squads, like nice strength, strength uh, 10 woman squads, and so on. Okay, right, so onto the rules. So let's talk about orders here. Make sure your orders match in to make sure you benefit from all of the rules. 
Uh, so acts of faith. If your army contains at least one unit with this ability, you can, you can perform one act of faith in each phase. To do so, you'll use a miracle dice. Right, so gaining miracle dice. You gain one miracle dice at the beginning of each battle round, and you gain one at the end of a phase if one or more of the following conditions are met. Uh, one or more times during that phase. So you get a dice straight away and then you're trying to earn them as you go along. So Vengeance, a unit from your army with the Axe of Favorability destroys an enemy unit. Just very straightforward. Sacrifice, a character unit from your army with the Axe of Favorability is destroyed. Straightforward, quite easy to remember. Purity, psychic power is resisted by a unit from your army with the Axe of Favorability without performing an act of faith to do so, as described below. Valor, you roll an unmodified uh, an unmodified one for a miracle test taken for unit with the Axe of Faith ability without performing an act of faith to do so, as described below. When you gain a miracle dice, roll 1d6. The number you roll is the value of that miracle dice. That value cannot be changed unless the rule states otherwise. Keep your miracle dice to one side. This is your pool of miracle dice. So then you perform the act of faith. So say you harvest them in. Before making a dice roll for a model or unit from your army with the Axe of Faith ability, you could choose to use one or more of the dice from Miracle Dice Support instead. For each individual dice that is being rolled as part of the dice roll, you could select one Miracle Dice from your Miracle Dice Pool to be substituted in place of that dice. The dice that has been substituted for is not rolled, and instead the value of the chosen Miracle Dice is used as if it had been rolled. Right, so you're pre-rolling, you're stacking all up, and then when you need it, you, you take the relevant result that you need. Once all Miracle Dice substitutions have been made, remove the chosen Miracle Dice from your Miracle Dice pool uh, and roll any remaining um, subs substituted dice that are part of the dice pool. You can use Miracle Dice for an act of faith for any of the following types of dice roll. An advanced roll, a charge roll, deny the witch test, hit roll, wound roll, save and throw, damage roll, morale test. Yes, yeah, so sometimes a low dice score uh, may well come in useful if you're trying to score a low amount perhaps for like a morale test for example. So don't always think, oh, I've rolled a one, it's really bad. You keep it to the side and it may well prove useful. You've got to choose when to use it at the right point during the game. That's uh, quite cool. Right? You, once you pick those rules up, I imagine it'd be a lot of fun. A very unique style uh, for these. Miracle dice is not a modified or inherently modified dice. So for example, if you use a miracle dice with a value of one for morale test, that is considered to be an unmodified roll of one. Right, so it can't be adjusted. When re-rolling a dice roll, no new miracle dice may be substituted. The number and values of any miracle dice that have already been substituted in the dice roll remain the same for the reroll. Okay. Then uh, there's rules here for sacred rites. If every unit in your army has Adeptus Soratus and Adeptus Ministorum faction keywords, right, so you would need the whole army. Here's going to watch out for allies. The, this unit gains an ability depending on which sacred rite is active for your army. Determine which sacred right is active for all units from your army with this ability at the start of the battle. To do so after deployment before the first battle round begins, select one sacred right from the following table to be active. Alternatively, you can roll 2d6 to randomly generate two sacred rights to be active. The duplicate result has no additional effect, but is considered to be active for the purposes of the battle right strategy. In either case, uh, they are active until the end of the battle. In either case, sacred rights are active until the end of the battle. Okay. So, this is your score then, six different results. Uh, the Hand of the Emperor is number one. When a unit with the Sacred Rites advances, add one to the advance roll. When you make a charge roll for the unit with the Sacred Rite, add one to the result. Okay. So there's been a fair bit of this from Games Workshop, trying to uh, help factions out with the uh, nine inch charge if you're deep striking, and so there's this little bonus here uh, that can help out with things like that. Spirit of the Martyr. When a model of the sacred right is destroyed, roll 1d6 before removing the model from play. On a 5 plus, that model can either shoot with one of its ranged weapons if it were your shooting phase, or make one attack with one of its melee weapons if it were the fight phase. If the model has a damage table, use the bottom row of the damage table when shooting and attacking in melee. Okay, so it's like a the space rings with their banner, uh, similar to that. Aegis of the Emperor. When a deny the witch test is taken for a unit with this sacred right, add 3. To the total. These are all pretty good here. Very sort of logical, straightforward, and they're all pretty good. Divine Guidance. When resolve an attack made by a range weapon by model with a sacred right, on an unmodified wound roll of a six, the armor penetra penetration characteristic of that weapon is improved by one. So that's going to help you out with your bolt shots and so on. Sixes to wound, extra, uh, or AP minus one. 
chromosome of the AP. The Passion. When a result attack made by a melee weapon with this model, a modified hit roll of 6 scores an additional hit. And then Light of the Emperor. When a morale test is taken, you can reroll the dice. Okay. So, yeah. That's good fun. You learn this for your army and then uh, get used to using it. And there's some great stuff there. Shield of Faith. Uh, models in this unit have a 6 plus invent save. In addition, one model in this unit can attempt to resist one psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase in the same manner as a psychic by taking a Deny the Witch test if that model is within 24 inches of the enemy model manifesting that psychic power. When taking the Deny the Witch test, roll 1d6 instead of 2d6, the psychic power is resisted if the roll is greater than the result of the psychic test that manifested the power. So it's, it's 1d6, so it's quite unlikely if your opponent rolls badly. Oh, dear, it's only going to block... Um, Poor powers or poor rolls. You know, opponent rolls a three or a four, something really low. They barely manifest a, a, a low grade power. Unless you're getting your Aegis of the Emperor plus three to the total result, then you can start standing a pretty good chance of blocking stuff. But uh, it's better than nothing. Zealot. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model of this unit. You could reroll the hit roll if the unit's model's unit made a charge move, was charged, or performed heroic intervention this turn. So reroll attacks for Zealot. Yeah, and again, useful. For sure. So yeah, sensible enough of all of these uh, rules here. So we'll take a look at the first unit, the Canon S. I'll, get, I'll call out the points values for, for you here as well. So, uh, a Canon S is 45 points, not including your war gear. Power level 3, HQ choice. Movement 6. Weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+. Plus. Strength 3, Toughness 3, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 9, 3 up save. Uh, then the rules here for Bolt Pistol, Bolt Gun, I'll leave those as usual rules. Uh, Condemner Bolt Gun, range 24, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. Resolve an attack made by this weapon against a Psyche unit. The weapon has a damage characteristic of D3 for that attack, so a slight improvement there against Psychers. The Blessed Blade. Here is plus two strength, fighting at strength five, AP minus three, and D3 damage. Useful enough. Chainsword, usual rules, power sword, usual rules, frag, and crack grenades. This model can be equipped with a bolt gun and power sword instead of one bolt pistol and one chainsword. If this model is equipped with a bolt gun and one power sword, it additionally has a rod of office. This model can be equipped with one of the following instead of one bolt pistol, a condemned bolt gun, and a weapon from the pistols list. Which is I've missed it. It's usually usually turn to the front to get your war gear options. Page ninety six. I'll look it up. Yeah. That's no, here. Yeah. Okay. So pistol options: bolt pistol, hand flamer which cannot be taken by Canon S, Plasma Pistol, and Inferno Pistol, similar to the Blood Angels, I believe, which is uh, it's useful. Unless it's range three, range six, yeah. Pistol one, strength eight, minus four, D6 damage. And uh, so if you get in three, it's uh, two D6 discard the lowest for damage. Yeah, now that would be useful. Inferno Pistol would be, remember your Blizzard's got two plus as well. Seven points. God, yeah, I'll take one of those. God, seven points. Yep. So I would, I would go for. Depends what you want, wh where you want the cannonist to be. If you reckon you're going to go into close combat and so on, stand some kind of chance and, and cause trouble. The Inferno pistol. You fire it at stuff. Fire it before you charge in. Fire it during melee. Uh, if it comes around to your turn, you're still in combat. Great pistol. Yeah against characters, monsters, vehicles, good all-rounder against heavier targets. So I would certainly, for seven points, take that pistol and take advantage of that. And then the Blessed Blade as well, if that's possible. It's a decent weapon. Wouldn't expect the character to do miracles, but that's uh, but, uh, pretty good equipment. This model can be equipped with one of the following sort of chain sword, a power sword, and a blessed blade. Yeah, so you get easily done. Uh, and a blessed blade. 
is nine points. Not bad. It's really good actually for what it is. That plus two strength, if minus three, and crucially that D3 damage. Yep. So for about over 60 or 65 or points, you're getting a pretty good character there. There's a four plus invon save here as well. Which is good. Uh, if this one is equipped with a chain so it can it can have a brazier of holy fire or a null null rod. There's a lot of options here. Null rod's 12 points. And the brazier of holy fire is eight points. So you, there's a lot of customization here. So it comes with the Rosarius, four plus invon save, has acts of faith, sacred rites, shield of faith. The Brazier of Holy Fire. Whilst any models from your army that have Braziers of Holy Fire within six inches of any demon unit, subtract one of the leadership characteristic of each of those enemy units. Doesn't sound that great. In addition, if this model has a Brazier of Holy Fire when once per battle, when this model fires Overwatch or is chosen to do to shoot with, it can unleash the Brazier's Holy Flames. When it does, select one enemy unit within 12 of the model. If firing Overwatch, you must select the unit that was declared the charge this turn. Yet, yeah. roll 1d6 on 2+, plus. it's d3 mortal wounds. And... Uh, if it's a demon, it's D6 mortal wounds. It's D3 mortal wounds on Overwatch. Four. Eight points. Whether that's worth it. Yeah, that is pretty good. You can't take everything, though. You've got to choose what you, what combination you're going to go for. Uh, lead the right, just reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by models in friendly order units. Master within six, yep, yeah, just like space ring captain. Rod of office. If this model has a rod of office, add three to the range of its lead the right just ability. Right, so that becomes a nine if you take the rod of office. And the null rod is going to help with psychic powers here. If this model has a null rod, then it can attempt, then it cannot be targeted or affected by psychic powers. <laughs> Great. In addition, whilst any models from your army that have null rods within 18 of any enemy psychic models, subtract one for the psychic test and deny the witch test taken for those enemy models. Great rules for that. Very cool. Yeah, it's a can nest. Uh, useful HQ there. Not too expensive and loads of options. See, I'd have a, a, one or two of those in my list for sure. Even if I was going to go for Celestine, a couple of can nests would be very useful for sure. All right, so next, uh, Celestine, the living saint here. I, this is just... If I was collecting sisters of battle, this would just be an auto include, even if the rules are terrible, which I'm sure they're, they're good enough. Uh, it's just an amazing model. Real focal point here for your collection. That's what you want when you're collecting an R. You want something to be the focal point, your, your pride and joy, your favourite model. And this, even though it's one of the older releases, one of the older of the newer releases, this is uh, still one of my favourites here. Brilliant, brilliant model. So, uh, named characters. 160 points. It's not ridiculously expensive, not cheap, sort of in the middle. So, uh, power level 8, HQ choice, movement 12, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, which is superb, leadership 9, a 2 up save. It's a brilliant stat line. Only one per army, the ardent blade is the war gear. So you can shoot with it, range 8, assault D6. And if you're up against the chaos of demons and so on, you need models that are going to be able to fight here. You can't flinch away from that. So uh, this is Celestine gets stuck in here at close range. Assault D6, strength 5 minus 1, 1 damage, and it's also hits. So useful on the assault before you charge in, useful on Overwatch also, but not that amazing a weapon. In close combat, it's plus 4 strength, so she fights at strength 7, AP minus 3. And then it is two damage every time as well. So decent enough blade also. Axe of Faith, Sacred Rites, and Shield of Faith. Uh, the healing Tears. At the start of your movement phase, you can select one friendly Gemini superior unit uh, within three inches of this model. If your unit contains a model that has lost any wounds, the model regains its lost wounds. Otherwise, if a model from the unit has been destroyed, you can return it to the battlefield with two wounds remaining. Place it within three of this model and unit coherency of the model. Uh, if the model cannot be placed, then it's destroyed, or not, re or not returned to the battlefield. So excellent, so you can bring them back. Brilliant rolls, I mean this is... Oh dear, starting to get the urge to collect here, I must resist. <laughs> so, the Armour of Saint Catherine, 4 plus Invon save as well. Saintly Blessings, the Invon save, friendly Adeptus or Aritus Infantry units received from their Shield of Faith abilities improved by one whilst the units within six inches of this model. It's improved by two instead if it's a Gemini superior unit. 
to a maximum of 4 plus. In addition, models in friendly adapters, Ministorum, National Militarum units have a 6 plus in one save, whilst the units are in 6 inches of this model. Great. Uh, miraculous intervention. Uh, the first time this model is destroyed, roll 1d6 at the end of the phase, on a 2 plus, uh, return that model to play with its wounds remaining placing it as close as possible to its previous position on the one inch away from any models. I'm sure you'll have a command reader on standby for that. Brilliant. It's almost guaranteed to return with all the wounds remaining. I just... fantastic. And it means you can be reckless to some degree, within reason. Yeah, it's, you know, getting Celestine into close combat, and if she dies, then you know, you're virtually guaranteed to get Celestine back again. With all the wounds remaining, it's a brilliant, miraculous intervention. Fantastic. So if I was collecting sisters, absolutely without doubt, i put them in as well. So the Seraphim, the Gemini Superior, we'll come to those a bit later on. Again, fantastic models, but a uh, beautiful release there in Games Workshop. Uh, next HQ choice, power level 9, is Triumph of St. Catherine. So, uh, 185 points here, more expensive than Celestine. So, uh, it's interesting it's that many points, but we'll see if it's justified. This is what you get. Movement 6, uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength, toughest 3, 18 wounds, and there's a damage bracket there. Uh, attacks is uh, across here, and then leadership 9 and then uh, 3 plus save. So remaining wounds, 10 to 18 wounds, is 14 attacks, 5 relics, and uh, then uh, 5 stones, 8 attacks, then 2 relics, then 1 to 4 wounds, the last few wounds left, you get 6 attacks and 1 relic. The Triumph of St. Catherine is a single model equipped with 6 bolt pistols, the Martyr's Sword, relic weapons, frag grenades, crack grenades, only one model per army. So the usual rules for the bolt pistol, the Martyr's Sword, is plus three strength, final strength six, eight minus three and two damage. And when the bearer fights, no more than four attacks can be made with this weapon. Right, so it's like a, a, a main character here with a sword and shield and then a whole procession around it as well. So it's all lumped together as an 18 wound model. That's the way they've worked it here. Uh, relic weapons, when we come to those, is uh, plus two strength and AP minus one, and frag and crack grenades. Axe of Faith, Sacred Rites, a Shield of Faith. Uh, so the Presidium Protectiva, four plus in one save. When resolving an attack made by this against this model, it's minus one for the hit roll. The Fiery Heart, morale tests taken for friendly. Sisters of Battle units of N6 are automatically passed, auto pass morale. Solemn procession, this model cannot embark upon a transport. Very cool theme. Again, a nice, uh, you know, maybe you think, oh, Celestine's a bit common. Other people, have, you know, it's the auto choice, go for something different. You can go for the Triumph of St. Catherine. Entirely different styles. Procession on foot here. But very, very uh, good style here. It look, does look very cool. Um, relics of the Matriarchs. This model has a number of relics as detailed in the damage table above. Each relic grants the model an ability as follows. This model can have only one of each relic. When this model suffers damage, that reduces the number of relics. Select which of the relics and their abilities are no longer. The model no longer has. If the model gains lost wounds, that increases its number of relics. Select which of the relics and their abilities the model regains. Okay. So here we go. I guess these are the relics here. Yeah. So, sensor of the sacred rose at the start of each turn, gain a miracle dice. Next, uh, Simulacrum of the Ebon Chalice. At the start of your shooting phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches of this model, adding 1 to the result of the unit being rolled for is a Psyker, and 1 to the result of the unit being rolled for is a Chaos unit, a 5 plus unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. So it is to be carried into the heart of, of trouble here. Per Petals of the Bloody Rose, add 1 to the hit rolls for attacks made by melee weapons by models in friendly Adeptus Soritis units whilst within 6 inches of this model. Yep, again encouraging to get stuck in with this icon. Of, so it's not this thing that just sits at the back, it's the, the procession's designed to go right into the heart of the enemy. Crazy. 
Icon of the Valorous Heart once per phase, you can perform an act of faith for a friendly unit within six inches as the act of faith ability, even if you have already performed one act, one or more act of faith in that phase. And then the Simulacrum of the Argent Shroud, when you perform an act of faith for a friendly unit, a friendly unit once within six inches, this model you can increase or decrease the value of one miracle dice used by one. So you can manipulate the dice then as you wish. Uh, before you use it to a maximum of six and a minimum of one. This is not cumulative of any other abilities that increase or decrease the value of Miracle Dice. For example, the Dialogus is stirring rhetoric ability. A lot of new rules to learn, but then it's an entirely different playstyle with these. So you, that's what you'd want, you'd expect it to be different. That's the challenge, that's the, the, the fun thing about it as well. And then uh, it's a good selection of HQs here actually. Uh, Junif Iruta next. Yep. Flanked by the orders, of, uh, the warriors of her order, Junif leads the advance towards the enemy position, her fiery words resounding in the hearts of every Sauritus who follows her. Not too keen, it's okay on the model. Very strong style. Uh, 110 points. This is your cheaper option here for a one of the named characters. Power level 6, uh, HQ choice. Even 10, on a floating thing. Weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 3, toughness 4. Uh, 7 wounds, loads of wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 to 3 up, so. Uh, it's equipped with 2 heavy flamers, the Mace of Castigation. Heavy flamer then, uh, you know, it's 2d6, auto hit, strength 5 minus 1, it's pretty good on the assault and for overwatch as well. And the mace is plus two strength, sufficing at strength five, eight minus one, and two damage. Axe of faith, sacred right, shield of faith, four plus invun save, fiery conviction. Real hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one for attacks made by models in friendly order of our martyred lady units whilst serving six inches this model. Brilliant. Excellent. Then pulpit of St. Helene's Basilica. The invulnerable save Adeptus Aritus infantry models receive from the Shield of Favour is improved by 1 to maximum 4 plus spells within 6. Yep, yeah, really good, actually. And it does explode on a 6, which is 1 mortal wound, 2 minutes and 3 inches. So, then on to your cheaper HQs, which is very useful for trying to build up your detachments. Uh, yes, yeah, so you could try and go for things like your double battalion, for example, uh, with cheap HQs uh, to get your c precious command points. Uh, missionary, then, here. HQ choice, power level 2, movement 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, 6 up save. Armed with auto gun, last pistol, chainsaw, frag and crack grenades, you won't cover those, just the usual rules. So you can go for a bolt pistol, a shotgun, instead of an auto gun, and one last pistol. Uh, special rules here, zealot, that's your reroll hits in close combat. Most of the time, if you're charged or were charged or frag interventions. 4 plus invad save here as well. War Hymns. Add one to your attacks characteristic of models in Depta Ministorum Infantry and Astra Militarum Infantry units whilst within six uh, of models this ability. The Lone, uh, lone Mission. If your army is battle forged, no more than one missionary can be included in any detachment. If you are limited with these, words of the Emperor here. Roll 1d6 when an Adeptus Ministorum model flees whilst its units are within six inches of any friendly models this ability and a four plus that model does not flee. A bolster from Rao. Just there. Just get your points here for a missionary. 38 points. I think all the war gear there is free, so it's a very, very cheap HQ choice. For sure. It's good. Sometimes the codex comes out and it's you're a bit lean as far as options are concerned, choices, but there's lots of HQ choices here. That's it. Yeah, but that's that's crucial to have that cheaper option just there with a the missionary. I think you'd, be, you'd maybe be going for, because you only take one per mo per army. Yeah, well, world cannons are cheap enough. You could maybe try and push for a brigade. Yep, because that'll give you a nice spread of all the all the models, all the different abilities. You get a nice lot of command points. Okay, so you're on to troops now. That's your one option. That's your battle sister squad. Now, how many points is a battle sister? 
Nine points. Squad of ten for ninety points. How can that? It's a pretty good deal. I mean, your, your Space Marine Scouts, 11 points, I believe. So it's a very, very good points value there. Power level four for a unit of five. Your weapon skill's not as good. You're on uh, four plus. Movement six, for weapon skill. Uh, movement six, weapon skill four plus. Blizzard skill three plus. Strength three, toughness three. One wound, one attack, leadership seven. But you are getting that three plus armor save. Then the sister superior just gets the extra attack and leadership eight instead of seven. So uh, you can, yeah, you can go for uh, there's five of them, uh, and then you can take up to five more battle sisters or ten more. So you have units of fifteen, and every model is equipped with a bolt pistol, a bolt gun, frag, and crack grenade. So well equipped is good. So I don't need to cover the rules for those weapons, all standard. One battle sister can be equipped with a weapon from the special weapons list. Of, instead of a bolt gun. So. Your special weapons then is a flamer, a melter gun, or a storm bolter. So, standard weapons there. Don't need to cover those. But you can equip it for anti-infantry, anti-tank. Ability just there, but all useful weapons. One battle sister can be equipped with one of the following instead of a bolt gun. So you can go for the smaller squads of five and still take the melter gun or the special weapon. One battle sister can be equipped with one of the following instead of a bolt gun. One weapon from the heavy weapons list or one weapon from the special weapons. If you go for those large units of ten, uh, you can get the two two special weapons or you can get the heavy and one special. So your heavy is heavy bolter, heavy flamer and a multi melter as well. Okay, one battle sister equipped to a bolt gun can have a, uh, a simulacrum imperialis, which rules are just here. If model this unit has a simulacrum imperialis, then once per phase you can perform an act of faith this unit, even if you've already performed an act of faith. Covered that already. And that will cost, maybe covered the cost for that already, but we'll, it's five points. So a bit more flexibility for a few points. The Sister Superior can additionally be equipped with one weapon from the melee weapons, or be equipped with one weapon from the melee weapons, instead of a bolt gun. Be additionally equipped with one weapon from the melee weapons list, or can be equipped with a weapon from the melee weapons list, instead of one bolt gun. Right, okay. And your options there are here again, just cover it. Chainsword, power maul, and power sword. Okay. Uh, the sister superior can be equipped with one weapon from the ranged weapons list instead of a bolt gun. So those ranged weapons, bolt pistol, bolt gun, combi flamer, combi melter, combi plasma, com uh, condemn the bolt gun. Interesting, you got access to combi there as well. So you, know, you go for a squad of 10, double melter, then a combi melter also. So uh, that's useful as well, for sure. Brilliant. And even your smaller squads of five, you can get one melter in there and then give a combi melter as well to the superior. So even the small squads can be useful enough. Yeah, interesting. Okay. As the sister superior can be equipped to one weapon from the pistols list instead of one bolt pistol. And then the unit can have an incensor cherub, which will cost five points again. The Incensor Cherub. If this unit has an Incensor Cherub, once we're battle at the beginning of a phase, that Incensor Cherub can intercede. If it does, the Cherub is removed from play and you gain one Miracle Dice. Wow, interesting. And there's the little Cherub on a base. Just that. So it's physically represented on the table, which is excellent to help you remember. And again, lets your opponent know you've used it, you know, it's removed from play and so on. Brilliant. Excellent. Really, really good. You know, and even, um, I'm just thinking like, even if you don't use these, don't take the upgrade, you could use them as objective markers or uh, for your collection as well, so it's worth painting them up. Uh, it's removed from play, you gain a miracle point. Roll 2d6 when you do so and select which one to keep. The miracle dice you gain can only be used to perform an act of faith for this unit. 
and only in that phase, at the end of the phase, if the dice has not been used, it is lost. And in sense, a cherub is represented by the model. Uh, it does not count as a model for any rules purposes. Whilst unit with an incensor cherub is on the battlefield, the incensor cherub must be within two inches of it. Gotta keep it nearby. Fair enough. So on to elites next. Uh, the preacher is next. So elites choice power level one. Mm, yep. 30 points. Very low power level rating though here. Movement six, weapon skill and ballistic skill four plus, strength three, toughness three, four wounds, three attacks, leadership seven, six up save. It's got a las pistol and chainsword, so zealot. The special rules then, icon of ecclesiarchy, whilst any preacher units from your within six inches of any chaos units, subtract one from their leadership. It's got a four plus invon save for the preacher, and war hymns, a bunch attack characteristic of models, end up just ministering infantry, astro tire infantry units whilst within six arts. So you can uh, used up the missionary slot and you, you want more of that kind of helpful abilities then you can take preachers instead or as well as right the Gemini superior so these uh, look after Celestine and again fantastic models I would use these for sure Celestine Gemini Gemini squad 16 points not including war gear. Movement 12. 3 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. Strength 3, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, 3 up save. Uh, you get 1 in the unit, you don't have to take 2. You can just take 1 and you can add 1 to it. Every model is equipped as power level 1. Every model is equipped with a bolt pistol, power sword, frag crack grenades. Only 1 per army. Yep. 3 attacks though. Cool. Axe of Faith, Sacred Rites, Shield of Faith, Divine Guardians. If your army is battle forged, this unit does not take up a slot in detachment that includes Celestine model. This unit can never have a wall of trait or any relics. Life Wards. When a friendly Celestine model within three inches of this model would lose any wounds as a result of an attack made against that model, this unit can attempt to intercept that attack. Roll D6 on 2 plus. The model does not lose wounds, and this unit suffers one mortal wound for each of those wounds. Only one attempt can be made to intercept each attack. Yeah, you combine that with the ability that you're resurrecting one of these. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Nice. Protector from evil snipers and so on. Protector in close combat. Fantastic rules, great theme. Great idea. But I guess you're paying for a power sword here. So you're looking at uh, 20 points a model. It's 4 points for a power sword. Yep. 20 points, 40 points to add that bodyguard in, but uh, it's a nice lot of power sword attacks, so that takes them, I reckon. Elites, there's three more elites here. And another three. And another four. Ha! <laughs> there's loads of elites. Repentia Superior, next. Power level two. Uh, here. 35 points, not including war gear. Movement 6, 3 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wins, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 up save. Uh, it's armed with neural, neural whips, frag crack grenades. The neural whip then is AP minus 2, strength for the user, which is strength 3, 1 damage. Resolve an attack made by this weapon against a unit other than a vehicle, in which no model has a leadership characteristic higher than 7. You add 1 to your wound rolls. And that's it, and you can take a bolt pistol. Frag and crack grenades uh, as well. Axe of Faith, Sacred Rites, Shield of Faith. Scourge of the Penitent. If your army is battle forged, this model does not take up a slot in the detachment. It includes any uh, Order Sisters Repentia units. Driven onwards. You can re-roll advanced rolls and charge rolls for friendly uh, Repentia units. Also in six. You can re-roll wound rolls of one for attacks made by melee weapons by models in friendly Order Repentia. Uh, Repentia squads whilst have been six also. Okay, so helpful enough for those points. Then uh, the actual Repentia squad, power level two. Much they each. 13 points a time. Mo uh, movement six, weapon skill and ballistic skill three plus strength three, toughness three, one wound, two attacks, leadership eight, and a seven plus save. 
you get four of them in a the squad, you can take up to five more. Yeah, the units of nine. Each one was equipped with a penitent eviscerator, which is times two strength, it's fighting at strength six. AP minus three, two damage. And it's minus one from the hit rolls. Should be on fours to hit. Do you get zealot though with these? Shield of faith, sacred rites, axe of faith. Uh, so then martyrdom, when this unit is destroyed, other than the morale phase, you gain one miracle dice. Solace of anguish, when a model of this unit would lose a wound, it's a five plus, the wound is not lost. But yeah, very cool models and a useful unit in close combat. So 13 points of time. Yeah, good news, the penitent eviscerator at zero points, so that's useful. So 13 points of time with them. Yeah, pretty good, taking down them. Um, Especially two wound models with heavier armor. Yeah. And if you start adding characters and abilities and start stacking that up, you can really turn these into a real de a decent enough unit. Okay. Celestian squads next. Power level four. As uh, movement six, weapons go ballistic skill three plus strength, three toughness, three, one wound, two attacks, leadership eight, and a three up save. And the Celestian superior, three attacks, and leadership nine, it goes up to. Five of them, you take five more. It can contain one Celestian superior instead of one Celestian. Each one is equipped with a bolt pistol, bolt gun, frag, and crack grenades. So you don't have to take the squad leader with these. So I'm guessing you have to pay extra for the Celestian squad leader. No. Don't think so. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. So you may as well, but then it depends on what war gear combination you want to go for. So, uh, bolt pistol, bolt gun, frag and crack grenades. Uh, one Celestian can be equipped with models from the special weapons list instead of a bolt gun. One Celestian can be equipped with one of the following instead of a bolt gun. Either from the heavy weapons list or from the special weapons list. Okay. So you really can equip these quite heavily, but you're losing your troops ability uh, with these ones. The soup, the uh, one Celestian can be equipped with a bolt gun, can have a, a uh, simulacrum imperialis. The superior can additionally be equipped with one weapon from the melee weapons list, or can be equipped with a weapon, weapon from the melee weapons list instead of a bolt gun. And the Celestian superior can be equipped with one weapon from the ranged weapons list. Uh, so that's your combi weapons option. And the superior can be equipped with one weapon from the pistol weapons list instead of one bolt pistol. And you can have the incense cherub as well. So you can just equip these a lot heavier. Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, Shield of Faith. The Celestian squad is 10 points at time instead of 9. So you're not paying too much more. Bodyguard, when a friendly ordered character model within 3 inches of this unit would lose any wounds as a result of an attack made against that model, you can attempt to intercept the attack. On 2 plus, the model does not lose the wounds, and one unit suffers a mortal wound for each of those wounds. Only one attempt to make to intercept for each attack. Swarm protectors, real hit rolls for attacks made by models in this unit, also in six of any cannon S's. Right, so that's a good combination with those. Uh, the Simulacrum Imperialis covered that already. The Incense Cherub covered that also as well. So yeah, useful units. Equip them well, good bodyguard units. And you're not paying much more for the privilege of them, so they've kept them at a sensible cost. So, uh, Zephrim squad next. Right, Zephyrim squad, power level 5, uh, it's an elite's choice, 13 points a time, you get the squad leader and 4 others and then you get you take up to 5 more, movement 12, uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill 3+, plus. strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 8, leader gets extra attack and then leadership 9. They're under bolt pistols, power sword, frag and crack grenades, it's usual rules. Uh, the Seraphim Superior can be equipped with one plaza pistol instead of a bolt pistol, and the Seraphim Superior is equipped with a bolt pistol. She can have a Zephyrim Pennant. Usual rules there. Rapturous blows. When resolving an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in this unit, you can reroll the wound roll. Useful. Seraphim Pennant, you reroll charge rolls made for all the units also in six of any friend units with a Seraphim Pennant. And the roll is made. Again, useful. Sky Strike. During deployment, you can set up this unit. In the sky, such so a deep strike with them, and angelic visage. Uh, the in run saves 
uh, for models in this unit to receive from the Shield of Faith abilities improved by one to maximum of four plus. Pretty good unit. Yep. Very cool. Dialogus. Next. Power level two. 35 points. Bolt pistol and a Dialogus staff. Zero points for that. So that's your costs. We have six weapon skill, four plus ballistic skill, three plus strength, three toughness, three four wounds, three attacks, leadership, eight and three up save. Uh, the staff is just plus one strength, no minus on the AP, and only one damage. Acts of faith, uh, the usual rules there. So Lord, Lord Haler, add one to the leadership characteristic of sisters' units whilst within six of any friendly model with this ability. Spiritual fortitude. When this model would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound in the psychic phase, roll one dice and a five plus. That's ignored. And then stirring rhetoric. You could perform an act of faith for a model or unit whilst within six inches of any friendly models with this ability. You can increase or decrease the value of one miracle dice by one. Again, you can manipulate the dice here of these characters to a maximum of six and minimum of one. It's not cumulative and so on, as we've covered earlier. Next is Hospitaller. 35 points. Uh, the Churgeon's Tools. Zero points for that as well. Very cheap character units here. Power level two. Move six. Web skill four plus. Ballistic skill three plus. Strength three. Toughest three. Four wounds. Uh, three attacks. Lose eight and a three up save. Uh, the Churgeon's Tools is, tools is uh, strength user. AP minus one. One damage. So, Medicus. Minister, the end of your movement phase, uh, you can turn your attention to one of the friendly Minister infantry units so in three. Uh, you can restore D3 wounds. Otherwise, if any models have been destroyed, you're all dice. No, there's no dice. You can return one destroyed model to the unit with one wound remaining. It's guaranteed return to play. Fantastic. Place it in three inches. Not even a roll. Wow, super reliable there with a hospitaler. Very, very useful. Yep. Should have hit one of those or a few of those in amongst your ranks, just restoring models to play. Brilliant choice there. So I'd, I'd go for some of those for sure. Uh, the one I can't pronounce, the Imagifer. The Imagifer, yeah. It is 45 points. Equipped with bolt gun, frame crack grenades, power level 2, movement 6. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, three plus strength, three toughness, three four wounds, three attacks, leash eight and a three up save. Uh, usual rules: litany of deeds. During deployment, after you select this model on the battlefield, select one of the following tales. This model has that ability till the end of the battle. Tale of the faithful. Reroll deny the witch tests for models in order units. Last in six. Tale of the stoic. Weapons of an armor penetration characteristic of minus one are treated as having an armor penetration characteristic of zero. Uh, against units whilst within six of a friendly models with this ability. Tale of the Warrior. Add one to the strength characteristic of models uh, in order units whilst uh, their unit is within six inches of friendly models with this ability. Yeah, pretty good. And a lot of stackable abilities here in amongst these multiple smaller elite and HQ options. So there's a lot of customization you can do and start stacking loads of stuff up. It's great fun, but it's a, it's a big learning curve here. Don't step into this saying, I'm just, just want to collect lady, lady space marines because that's, the rules are totally different. Vastly different here. Uh, Crusader squads, power level one. Nine points each. You get two to six of them in a squad. Movement six, weapon skill three plus, four plus ballistic skill, strength three, toughness three, one wound. Two attacks, leadership seven, four up save. Armed with power swords, the zealots. Uh, Ecclesiastic battle conclave. If your army is battle forged, this unit does not take up a slot. Includes any minister and priests. Three up in one save, that's for those storm shields. Uh, spiritual fortitude. It's obviously got to pay for your power sword. So nine points, power sword, 13 points. And then your storm shield. I wonder what they've got it here as. Zero points. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's brilliant. 
Uh, when I model this unit, we lose the wound as a result of a mortal wound in the psychic phase. It's five plus to ignore wounds coming through. But a bargain squad, I think. I think I reviewed that in the beta codex. They were excellent, and they have remained just as good here. And a bargain price for them also. Excellent. Very solid with that three plus in one so. Uh, Death Cult Assassins. 13 points time. Units of two to six of them. Power level one. Movement seven. Weapon skill three plus. Ballistic skill four plus. Strength four. Toughness three. One wound. Four attacks. Leadership seven. Five up save. And they're armed with Death Cult Power Blades, which is power swords basically. No extra bonuses there. They're zealots. Getting real re rerolls. Same as uh, Crusaders, brilliant. Uncanny Reflexes, 5 plus in one save. An Ecclesiastic Battle Conclave, your army's battle forged. The unit doesn't take up a slot, it's an action that contains any Minister and Priests. Great. Plenty of options here. And then the Arco Flagellants next. Power level 2, 13 points a time. Units of 3 to 10 of them. Movement 7, weapon skill 4+, plus, uh, no ballistic skill, strength 4, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, 7 up save. Uh, the Endurant leader gets an extra attack. Leadership stays the same. And they are equipped with Arco Flails, which is plus 1 strength, fighting at strength 5. AP minus 1, 1 damage, make D3 hit rolls for each attack made by weapon, with this weapon instead of 1. So 2D3 attacks per model. Yeah. Now if you start adding bonuses like extra attacks, all of a sudden, these guys are crazy. That one looks like he's about to kick a football. That crow flew out, yeah. Zealot, rerolling the hits as well. Wow, interesting here. That crow flowers are zero points also. The Berserk. So the sisters are bad. I don't think, again, don't think I was supposed to Marines, just bolt a line and so on. There's loads of units here that are happy to get stuck into close combat. The Berserk Killing Machines. When a model in this unit would lose a wound, a 5 plus the wound's not lost. Ecclesiastic Battle Conclave, the, the rules that we've covered for that. Another option there. Uh, Dominion Squads. This is your uh, fast attack now. So, uh, 10 points a time. Units of 5 to 10. Power level 5. Movement 6. Weapon skill 4 plus. Ballistic skill 3 plus. Which is the usual stat line. Leadership 7. And the squad there has leadership 8. Squad leader. And 2 attacks instead of 1. Usual. Uh, war gear. Up to 4 dominions can be equipped with a weapon from the special weapons list. You can go for your quad melters, for example. One Dominion equipped with a bolt gun can have a simulacrum imperialis. One Dominion superior can be equipped with a weapon from the melee weapons list. Uh, or one weapon from the melee weapons list instead of a bolt gun. The superior can be equipped with ranged weapons. That's your, you go for like four melters and uh, one combi melter. Or flamers would be great. Really good. Uh, Dominion superior can be equipped with uh, pistols. And the incensor chair up there as well. So, usual rules, just vanguard here. At the start of the first battle round before the first turn begins, this unit can move as if it were your movement phase. This unit must end its move all the nine inches away from any models. If both players have units that can do this, the player is taking the first turn. Moves their units first. This is your well equipped stuff here to, for Dominion squads. I imagine it would be particularly useful if you can put them inside your transport vehicles. Then you've got your uh, Seraphim squads here. You jump. Infantry, but the style vastly different to regular Space Marines. Uh, 11 points a time. Your base costs here for Sisters is cheap. For sure. Power level 4. Uh, unit contains 1 Superior and 4 Seraphim. You can take 5 more, so your units are 10. Equipped with 2 Bolt Pistols. I, lo I love that idea. I mean, it's not scary, but it's very cool. Frag and crack grenades. Uh, movement 12 for these. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 3, toughness 3. Uh, just the usual here. Uh, stat line. So your options then. Up to two Seraphim can be equipped to one of the following instead of two bolt pistols. Uh, two hand flamers. Nice. And Or two inferno pistols. That's each. Cool. 
Yeah. That is cool. The problem with the Inferno pistols is your, when you deep strike down, you'll be out of range. It's only downside, but then, I wonder what range the hand flames are. Range six as well. So, hand flame is basically a flame, but it's the lower strength. It's uh, strength three instead of, instead of strength four. The Seraphim, used in close combat, you're locked in combat, you can still fire your hand flames out. Uh, the Seraphim Superior could be equipped to one of the following sort of a bolt pistol, it's a chain sword or a power sword, as you see modelled here. And then the superior can take a plasma pistol instead of a bolt pistol. You can deep strike with them, usual rules, and angelic visage. Uh, the invun save this unit receives from Shield of Faith ability is improved by one to maximum of four plus. But yeah, tactically useful. Yeah, good for harassing the enemy lines. And if you can get take a squad of five, equip two of them with the inferno pistols, that's four pistol shots ambushing tanks and monsters, characters even, jumping about, tapping uh, vehicles out and so on in close combat. So yeah, definite tactical use for them. Right, onto heavy supports now, the Exorcist, next. So at the moment you've got your squads, you can specialise, picking on, you know, choosing which type you want to go for. You've got your close combat, culty groups, of units and so on, but what about heavy firepower, your backline stuff? So the Exorcist, uh, here to see if that can help out. Power level 8. 90 points is your starting cost. Uh, the Exorcist Missile Launcher, which is 70 points on top of that as well. So, 160 points then. For this, yep. So you add that on, it's 160 points. And then you get a heavy bolt on top of that as well. So 170 points. These, these aren't cheap here. Okay, so... This model can be equipped with one Exorcist Conflagration Rockets uh, instead of one Exorcist Missile Launcher. And you can take a Hunter Killer Missile as well. That's cool. So Conflagration Rockets, we'll just cover that here. Um, 40 points instead of 70, right, so it's a lot cheaper option. So the Exodus Missile Launcher, range 48, superb range, heavy 3 D3, so you're going to get between 3 and 9 shots of this. Oh, it's horrific. Strength 8, minus 3, D6 damage. Wow. That is scary. Yeah. If you go for the Conflagration Rockets, it's pretty good actually, range 48, heavy 3d6, so between 3 and uh, 18 shots. Strength 5, this is your anti-infantry here, AP minus 2, 1 damage. Yeah, pretty good. It explodes, it has the usual special rules and it comes with smoke launchers. But yeah, 3d3, uh, strength 8 minus 3, d6 shots, or d6 damage is pretty very, very nasty. They were nasty, but used to play against them in 7th edition, and they've, they've kept their nastiness. Not the cheapest tanks, though. Uh, so, usual rules. Yeah, just like a... No, the Toughness 8 here. So they're quite tough as well. 3-up save and Toughness 8, and they come with 12 wounds. So they are tougher than your standard sort of Space Marine vehicle. So yeah, pretty good. I would take 2 in an army, at least. For sure. Possibly three. Yeah, you'd need it. Mortifiers next. Power level three. Uh, 36 points. The Anchorite is 42 points. You get one Mortifier. Conditionally contain up to five Mortifiers. It can contain one Anchorite instead of one Mortifier. Each one is equipped to two Heavy Bolters, two Penitent Flails. Wow, interesting. So the Mortify here, rain, uh, movement 9, so they're quick enough. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 3+, plus. strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 4 up save, and the Anchorite has a 3 up save, and that's it. Not Nothing else extra, but an uh, impressive stat line for these. Two bolters, tons of firepower, usual rules. And then the Penitent Flails, plus one strength, so he's going to fight at strength six, eight minus two, one damage. You make three hit rolls for each attack made by this weapon. Unbelievable. 
ridiculous amount of attacks. If the bear is equipped with two of this weapon, when the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack using this profile. Yeah, two bolters, two penitent flowers. God. One model can be equipped with a heavy flame instead of a heavy bolter. Well, uh, any model, sorry. Any model can be equipped with two heavy flamers instead of two heavy bolters. Any model can be equipped with one penitent buzz blade instead of one penitent flower. Any model can be equipped with two penitent buzz blades instead of two penitent flowers. So the buzz blade, you know, what an exciting unit this one. Uh, the buzz blade zero. Interesting. And the penitent flower, I guess, is zero as well. So it's zero to swap them out. And the buzz blade is plus three strength, so if I think it's strength eight, minus three and two damage. And if you've got two of them, you get an extra attack. Powerful unit. Cool. Still like the flower. Yeah, real anti infantry here. God. Anguish of the Unredeemed. When a model in this unit is destroyed, roll 1d6 before removing it from plan of 4 plus, it meets out its final vengeance. Each enemy unit within an inch suffers d3 mortal wounds. <laughs> no, repri no reprieve. When a model in this unit would lose a wound, roll d6 and a 6 the wound is not lost. Blaze of Agony. When you choose this unit to shoot with in your shooting phase, you could choose for heavy bolters that model unit is equipped with to have a type characteristic of Assault 3 until the end of that phase or for heavy flamers uh, that models in this unit are equipped with to have a type characteristic of pistol d6 <laughs> to the end of the phase gosh so you could strike out in close combat with heavy flamers or move the heavy bolters without minus to your hit rolls or even advance with them and still fire minus one to the right, brilliant what a brilliant brilliant unit gosh. Yeah, fantastic. Mortify is superb. Yeah, and this is just, you know, raw as they come, let alone your other stratagems and so on. Uh, then we've got the Retributor squad here. I'd take Mortifiers, they look great. They, they really do look good. That's, that's a unit of the, the new codex here for me, that one. Uh, Retributor squad. Heavy support, power level six. 10 points a time. Usual stat line, weapon skill is 4 plus though for these. Weapon ballistic skill is 3 plus. And oh, no, that's the standard, isn't it? Weapon skill 4 plus is your standard for sisters of battle. Squad leaders, extra leadership and attack. Uh, usual loadouts for them. Up to four retributors can be equipped to weapons from the heavy weapons list instead of a bolt gun. One retributor can be equipped to a bolt gun, can have a simulacrum imperialis. The superior can take melee weapons as of the bolt gun. Just, just the usual, what you can take here, Morium, Cherub, and so on and so on. Special rules there, the usual. Simulacrum Imperialis, cover the rules for that. Faithful Advance, models this unit do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Uh, rates, rights of fire, add four to the range characteristic of heavy flamers. Uh, models in this unit uh, that's equipped with, that's very cool. And the rules for the Morium Cherub there also. Decent heavy fire power support and some cool rules for them. Yeah, so this is about, there are loads of options in this codex. Loads of ways to load out your squads. Fantastic variety, great HQs. So, you know, Games Workshop haven't released a limited codex with a few, handful of options and you've got a cut down army. Instead, you've got tons of options here. Brilliant. Cool. Yeah, excellent. So, uh, Penitent Engines next. So, 28 points. Gets you one. You can take up to three more of them. Uh, they're under two heavy flamers, two penitent flowers. So you get the flowers for free, I believe, and then you've got to pay for your heavy flamers. So, you're pushing up beyond sort of 50 points here. Let's have a look. Heavy flamer. 14 points times, you add another 28 points to that. So about 55 odd points each is your standard loadout. Um, so you're looking at uh, power level 3, movement 7, weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 5 plus. So heavy flames is your option there for sure. It's your only option anyway. Strength 5, toughness 5, 5, five wounds, 4 attacks, leash 8 and 4 up save. Covered all these here penitent, buzz blade, and flower. You can take them with. 
one penitent buzz blade instead of one penitent flower, two penitent buzz blades instead of two penitent flowers. They get zealots, you get your rerolls, and they get the berserk killing machines, five plus uh, ignoring your wounds. Yep, great. Uh, Sauritis Rhino, usual rules for Rhino. Yeah, you get a Storm Bolter. You can only take a Hunter Killer Missile, your only other option. You've got Self Repair, Sisters Special Rules. So I'm not going to go into that too much, usual rules for that. And the next is your Immolator. Uh, so that's your Razorback, really. Uh, which is Immolation Flamers. I'm not going to go all for all the rules here. You can take Hunter Killer Missile for this. Uh, the Immolation Heavy, Immolation Flamers, and Heavy Bolts are there as well. Immolation Flamers is range 12, Assault 2d6, Strength 5 minus 1. It's also hits, yeah, it's cool. Encouraging to get stuck in, and you've got a decent transport that can lay down some decent firepower. Cool. And transport capacity of 6. And then a bit of uh, terrain here, fortification, uh, Battle Sanctum. At 50 points. So, after it's set up, this model could be treated as, as an Adaptus Ministorum structure terrain feature. It cannot move for any reason. Uh, it's not treated as a friendly or enemy model. It cannot be targeted or affected by any attacks or abilities. Only infantry units, beast units, swarm units, and units that can fly can be set up uh, or end their move on the upper floors of the structure. Any unit could do so. Any unit can do so on the ground floor. Infantry units are assumed to be able to scale walls and traverse through windows, doors and portals readily. Models from infantry units can therefore move through the floors and walls of a ministerial structure without further impediment. Infantry units are entirely within uh, get cover. Other units are entirely within uh, receive the benefit of cover if the uh, usual rules 50% obscured. Blessings of the Saint. The start of each battle round if there are any Adeptus ministerial units from your army within 6 inches of the Sanctums, you gain one Miracle Dice. Consecrated ground. Add one to leadership characteristic of uh, Ministerum units whilst within six. Subtract one to the leadership characteristic of models in Chaos units whilst within six. So, give yourself some cover and extra protection if you have bonuses. Weapons of the Faith covered all of this, covered all of these. There they are, fighting away. And again, taking the fight to the demons here. Their vehicles, crazy squ squads, battle sister units, tanks at the back. Nice completeness with these now. Yeah, it's like it's the real deal now. Of Sisters of Battle. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. Okay. Next, you're talking about convictions. This is like your, your chapter traits here. Yeah. Then you have uh, Strength of Faith. If your army's battle forged, all troops units. All right, that's your uh, troop special rule. Secure objectives. You know, if you're on an objective with troops, it trumps other units and so on. So that's that. The pious and the penitent units listed below can be included in Adeptus detachment, even though some of them do not have the Adeptus Sororitis keyword. Furthermore, units listed below can be included in Adeptus Sororitis detachment without preventing other units from that detachment from gaining a conviction, an order conviction. No, the units listed below can never themselves benefit. Right, so it's similar to Triarch units for Necrons, don't gain the Dynasty keyword. Same here for Celestine, Gemini Superior, Hospitaller, Diaglas, Mortifiers, Penitent Engines, Triumph of St. Catherine, units consisting entirely of Minister and Priest, Ecclesiarch, Ecclesiarchy, Battle, Conclave, Models. Uh, if you're using Match to Play, the, uh, it's priestly delegation. A detachment that does not include any minister and priest can only be include one ecclesiarchy battle conclave unit. Okay, and then uh, here's your convictions here, depending on which order you choose. So uh, the standard then is the order of uh, our martyred lady, blood of martyrs. Gain one miracle dice at the end of any phase, other than the morale phase, in which units from this conviction were destroyed. This is in addition to miracle dice gained at the end of a phase in which a character in the Axe of Faith ability was destroyed. So it's extra miracle dice. In addition, resolve an attack made by model with this conviction. Add one to the hit roll if one of the models from that unit's uh, for that model's unit has been destroyed in this battle, even if they have been subsequently returned to the battlefield. So you take casualties, you're going to be more reliable for hitting. Cool. Yeah, pretty good. 
Uh, Valorous Heart, Stoic Endurance. When a model of this conviction would lose a wound, or a dice on a 6 plus, the wound is not lost. In addition, resolve an attack made by a weapon with an armor penetration characteristic of minus 1 against the unit of that conviction. Uh, it's treated as 0. Okay, and then whilst the unit of this conviction is under the effect of uh, Imagifia's Im Im Tale of Stoic Ability, weapons with armor penetration characteristic of AP minus 2 are also treated as being 0. Resolving attacks against that unit, so a bit more durability, a bit more protection from firepower damage coming in. They're all pretty good actually. Bloody Rose, quick to anger. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon or a pistol weapon by model of this conviction. The weapon's arm penetration characteristic is improved by one, so AP0 becomes AP minus one. Right, so you're really going to get stuck in. That's pretty good. Quite sure, for all the melee weapons as well, and pistols like hand flamers and so on. In addition, they have one to attacks characteristic of model this conviction during the turn in which they made a charge move, was charged, performed heroic intervention. Wow, really good, that one. That's great, that one there. If you are looking to get stuck in, that one's very good. The Ebon Chalice, Daughters of the Emperor. When a model this conviction would lose a wound, as a result of a mortal wound, roll 1d6, not 5 plus, you don't lose the wound. In addition, when you perform an act of faith for a model or unit of this conviction, you can first discard one miracle dice. If you do so, one miracle dice you use in the act of faith is considered to be a six. It's okay, uh, Argent Shroud deeds, not words. When you hit this conviction advances, it can fire range weapons as if it hadn't moved. Compared to that, that is superior there, uh, the Bloody Rose. And Sacred Rose, Devout Serenity. When a morale test is taken for you hit this conviction, no more than one model can flee. In addition, I don't know that's really going to happen too often, morale issues. As uh, after you form a an act of faith for a model or a unit of this conviction, roll 1d6 and a 5 plus you gain a miracle dice. In addition, resolve an overwatch, it's 5 pluses. Scores hits. Now, quick to anger with the bloody rose there, I think is the, the one I would be tempted to go for if I was determined to get stuck in. I think I would, I'd like to take the fight to the enemy if I went for Sisters of Battle, so I think that's the one that I would choose. So, uh, so far the codex looks Good, and they have given you four sides of stratagems here. This is this codex is the it's the whole thing here. This isn't a half measure. Games Workshop have given you a, a full codex filled to the brim with units, abilities, and uh, four sides, of, four pages of stratagems here. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, we'll go through these stratagems. Hopefully, they are. Really good, but we'll see. Uh, so, first one here, open the reliquaries. One command point. Use this strategy before the battle. Your army can have one extra relic. The ecclesiarchy, all the relics your army includes must be different. Right, it's an extra relic, great. Uh, embodied prophecy for one command point. Use this strategy at the start of the fight phase. Select one uh, Zephyrim squad from your army to the end of that phase and resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in a friendly Adept Osiratus unit within six of that Zephyrim unit. We are a wound rolls one. So it's okay. Okay, it's not... alright. And then next one, Furious Recital, one command point. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when an exorcist model from your army is chosen to shoot with right okay, anything to bolster these. To the end of the turn, subtract one of the leadership characteristic of models enemy units whilst the units have been 12 of the exorcist model. Subtract two for leadership characteristic of models in enemy chaos units whilst the units have been 12 of the exorcist model instead. Okay, so I don't know, not that amazing really. Next one. Uh, one command point. Blazing Piety. Use this strategy at the start of your psychic phase. Select one enemy chaos unit within six of any Diaglas models from your army. That enemy suffers one mortal wound. If that enemy unit is a demon unit, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. Right. Useful if you're specifically against that faction. So, so far, poor at the moment. We'll keep going. No battle rights is next one. Command point. Use this strategy at the start of the battle round. If your Warlord has a Sacred Rites ability and is on the battlefield, select one active Sacred Rite, roll 1d6 to randomly generate a new Sacred Rite. You may re-roll this result if the new Sacred Rite is the same one that is currently active. The selected Rite is no longer active and the new Sacred Rite is now active. Right, so you can, with a tactical play, they can swap that around. Uh, moment of Grace, one command point. Use a strategy after making a hit roll, wound roll for an attack made by Adeptosaurus model from your army. After making a saving throw from Adeptosaurus, so, right, a model from your army, discard 
1 to 3, Miracle Dice. Add 1 to the result of the roll for each Miracle Dice you discard. Ah, right, so you can modify your result there for a saving throw. Yeah, useful. Okay, interesting on that one. So yeah, I can imagine that being very useful in the game. Uh, final Redemption, one command point. Use the stratagem and assist us repent a unit from your army's chosen as the target of an attack made with a melee weapon. To the end of that phase, roll 1d6 when a model that unit is destroyed as a result of an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in an enemy unit. On a 4 plus enemy unit, suffers a mortal wound after it has fought. Yeah, 1d6. Ugh, right, okay. It's not for each wound. It's just if an enemy unit in a model in an enemy unit is destroyed. It's a chance to cause them all to win in a 4 plus. It could be the last wound you need or something, it could come in handy. But okay. Uh, Martyr's Immolation. On command point, use a stratagem when an immolator model from your army is destroyed. Do not roll a dice, it's auto explode. Okay. Similar to the Abmex stratagem. Again, useful enough. Nothing particularly outstanding here yet. Not a good sign, but we'll keep going. Holy Trinity, one command point. Uh, use this stratagem in your shooting phase after you have declared how you'll split the shots of Undept or Sororitas unit from your army. If that unit choose, shoots all of its weapons at the same target, and that target is in range of at least one bolt weapon being shot by a model in that unit, one flame weapon being shot by that unit, and one melter weapon, right? hence the Trinity, to the end of that phase and resolve an attack made by that model in that unit, add one to the wound roll. Plus one to the wound roll. Okay, that's pretty good. Holy Trinity, pretty good. Okay. Heroin in the making, one command point. Use a stratagem before the battle. After nominating your warlord, select one Deptor Sauritis character model from your army. Other than your warlord, Celestine, John F. Eureta, the Triumph of Saint Catherine, and generate one warlord trait fit. Alright, so uh, similar to Drakari, I think, can do something similar. Uh, it is regarded as your warlord for the purposes of the warlord trait. Each warlord trait in your army must be unique. You've randomly generated your old duplicates. It's a chance to hand out another warlord trait. Okay, again, be useful, perhaps. Uh, divine Intervention. Uh, two command points. Use a stratagem and adapt to Sorites character model other than Celestine, Gemini Superior, uh, Janif, or Catherine from your army is destroyed before any miracle dice are gained as a result. Discard one to three miracle dice. At the end of the phase, return that model to play of the number of wounds remaining equal to the number of miracle dice you discard, placing it as close as possible to the previous position more than one inch from any models. Do not gain, do not gain a miracle dice to the destruction of the model this turn. Each uh, sister character model can only be returned to the battlefield by a stretch and once per battle. But uh, yeah, you're very useful, yeah? Great to bring character back. And even with multiple wounds. So fine, good one. Holy Rage, one command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Select one uh, sister unit from your army. That unit can charge even if it advances this turn. Brilliant. There we go. Great. Excellent. See, sometimes I wonder. Uh, I think I've said this before in a couple of reviews that Games Workshop would probably be wise for, for any of the codexes just to have two sides of stratagems, very straightforward, and the ones that are really not that amazing, just don't bother with them because they're, they're not going to be used hardly ever by players anyway. So what's the point in having them and all these extra stratagems to learn if half of them hardly ever used because they're no good? So I just think it's more straightforward, especially now with all these uh, codexes, codex supplements, you're getting double stacked stratagems now, you know, with your original codex and then your supplement on top and it's proven to be loads of stratagems, too many perhaps. Plus detachments being used from some of the Vigilus books and so on. So, but anyway, okay, so Holy Rage, pretty good. Faith and Fury, two command points. Use a stratagem after you perform an act of faith for a hit roll. You can reuse the same miracle dice for the wound roll for that attack. Again, useful enough. Uh, Martyred, one command point. Use a stratagem at the end of any phase in which your order was destroyed. If your order is an adept, or sorry, just character model. If your order is Celestine, perform any. Rolls for the model's miraculous intervention ability before their stratagem. This stratagem may not be used if your order is returned to the battlefield using the miraculous intervention ability or the divine intervention stratagem. You gain D3 command points. Cool. Uh, venerated Saint on command point, use a stratagem during deployment after you've set up uh, an Imagifia model from your army. 
you can select two different towers so that models listen of deeds ability instead of one you can only use a strategy once per battle so uh, suffer not the witch one command point use the strategy to start the shooting or fight phase select one uh, Sister's unit from your army to the end of that phase and resolve an attack made by a model in that unit gain against the psycho you can re-roll the wound roll. Okay. That phase. So you can be shoot shooting or fight phase, yeah, okay. Again, useful if you're up against that particular type of unit. So there's a few here that are okay. A lot of them I imagine I'll hardly ever use. Because not very significant. Uh, Storm of Retribution, two command points. Use this stratagem when a retributor squad unit from your army fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with. Select one of the following. So this is what you're getting for two command points. To the end of the phase, and resolve an attack made by a heavy bolter by a in that unit. You have one to the hit roll. It's plus one to hit. Bolt heavy bolters. Ugh, but it's. I don't know. To the end of the phase, resolve an attack made with a, a heavy bolter by a model in that unit. That's plus one to the hit rolls. Two command points to get plus one to the hit roll. Mm. No. Not very good. Expensive. Or you can get until the end of the phase, resolve an attack made by a heavy flamer. Or you can re-roll the wound roll. It's okay, but it's two command points. To the end of the phase, add 12 to the range characteristic of multi melter models. Multi melters models in that unit are equipped with and when resolve an attack made by a multi melter by a model in that unit, add one to damage drop. That's better. Now why you choose the other two? Plus twelve inches to the range and plus one damage. Fantastic. So major incentive to go to the multi melter option for the retributors. Oh, that one's very good. Really good to catch an opponent out with that, extending the range. Uh, last right, it's one command point. Use this strategy at the end of the morale phase. Select one hospitaler model from your army to the end of the phase. Uh, to the end of that phase, when a morale test is taken for a friendly sister's unit within six, do not add the number of models from the unit that have been destroyed that turn. Good, yep, helpful. If you find yourself in a real problem with morale. Uh, devastating refrain. Use this strategy when an exorcist model from your army fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with. To the end of the phase, you can reroll. One command point, by the way, you can re-roll any or all of the dice rolled for to determine the type characteristic of an Exorcist missile launcher or Exorcist conflagration rockets that model was equipped with. Yes, there was some pretty good ones there. Deadly Descent, one command point, use a stratagem after a Seraphim squad from your army set up on the battlefield from high in the sky. At the end of that phase, add six to the range characteristic of pistol weapons. Ah, great. So the issue I said with those is you limit to your pistol range. Yep. Until the end of that phase, add six to the range characteristic of pistol weapons uh, models in that unit equipped with. The unit can shoot as if it were your shooting phase. Yep. Oh. So, you're setting them up. Use your strategy after the unit from your squad from your army is set up on the battlefield from high in the sky. So, this is in the movement phase. To the end of that phase, let's take it as the movement phase, add six to the range characteristic of pistol weapons. And that unit can shoot as if it were your shooting phase. Yes, you're actually firing in the, the movement phase, I believe, here. Excellent. And it's only one command point. That's brilliant. So that's a good one. Very, very useful indeed. Uh, Vessel of the Emperor's Will. One command point. Use your strategy after you perform an act of faith for a sister's character unit from your army. Gain one miracle dice. Uh, test of Faith, one command point, use the strategy at the end of a phase in which you gained a miracle dice as a result of purity or valour, as described in page 75, gain D3 miracle dice in addition to the one you would normally gain. So bonus is there. Exceptional proficiency, this is two command points, use the strategy when a Celestian squad from your army fires Overwatch is chosen to fight with, to the end of the phase, and resolve an attack made by a model in that unit, you can reroll the hit roll and you can reroll the wound roll. So it's when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit. I guess it's still all of the models. Or is it just one model in that unit? For that one, two command points. Uh, Blessed Bolts, one command point. Use a stratagem from Depth of Sorrow infantry unit from Army Fires Overwatch, or is chosen to shoot with. At the end of the phase, Storm Bolters, that model's in that unit are equipped with, have an arm penetration characteristic of AP minus two, and a damage of two. So big incentive to try and take Storm Bolters in a big, a large, in a large number. It's funny how it's only those that are affected by that. It's only storm bolters. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, Purity of Faith, next. On command point, use a strategy from an enemy psycho model. Manifest a psychic power within 24 of the sister's unit from your army. After any deny which, after any deny the witch attempt, roll 1d6 on a 4 plus. The psychic power is resisted. Half a chance just to block a psychic power. Brilliant. That's a good one. Uh, judgment of the Faithful, two command points. Use a stratagem after Adept of Sorotus unit from your falls back. That unit can shoot during the shooting phase of this turn and charge in the charge phase of this turn. Excellent. Very useful. Fall back. You can still shoot. And you can still charge. That's great. No, very, 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 very useful. Uh, extremist trigger word. <laughs> what? <laughs> two command points. Use the stressor in the fight phase with an acro flagellants unit from your trigger words. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, acro flagellants unit from your is chosen to fight with. Until the end of that phase, change the ability of acro flowers. The ability of arco flowers models in that unit are equipped with to make three hit rolls for each attack with that weapon instead of one. At the end of that phase, roll 1d6 for each one of the unit, each six. Uh, one model in that unit is destroyed. Right, so they can go absolutely nuts if they're triggered. <laughs> okay. Next is Desperate for Redemption. Three command points. Use a strategy at the end of the fight phase. Select one Penitent Engines, Mortifiers, or Sisters Repentia unit from your army whilst within an inch of enemy units. That unit from your army can fight as if it were the fight phase. So fight again. Deadly, deadly strategy. And there it is. Oh, so the Mortifiers, as deadly as they are, and you can get to fight again. Three command points. Brilliant. Chew through anything. Nice. Okay. Honor the Martyrs. On command point, use a strategy when Order of Our Martyred Lady character model from your army is destroyed as a result of an attack made by an enemy unit. To the end of the battle, so these are specific to your orders now, uh, whichever one you choose. To the end of the battle, when resolve an attack made by a model in an Order of Our Martyred Lady unit from your army against an enemy unit, reroll, hit rolls of one. So, reroll ones. Blind Faith. This is for the Valoris Heart Order. Uh, in the shooting phase, start the shooting phase. To the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by model in that unit. Ignore hit roll modifiers. Yes, now that's useful against things like pesky Eldar and so on. Okay. Tear them down. One command point. Use a strategy in the fight phase. An order of the bloody rose from unit unit from your army is chosen to fight with. To the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by model in that unit. Add one to the wind roll. Tear them down, plus one to wind rolls, yeah, not bad at all. Cleansing Flames, two command points. This is Order of the Ebon Chalice. Uh, when it fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, at the end of the phase, do not roll to determine the type characteristic of flame weapons. Models that you're equipped with, they have their maximum values, e.g. Heavy D6 becomes six shots. So you can max out with your flames. Excellent strategy. Faith is our shield. This is for Order of the Argent Shroud. In the psychic phase, uh, when it would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, at the end of that phase, the modern unit would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. Roll d6 and a 5 plus, ignore the wind. The Emperor's Judgment, one command point. Use the stratagem in order of the Sacred Rose unit from your army fires over, which is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a bolt weapon by a model in that unit. Non modified hit roll of 6 scores an additional hit. But again, is it just one model in that unit? In which case, it's pretty rubbish. So a mixed bag here. Some of these I think are virtually useless, some of these strategies, that you'd never use them because they're, they're so minimal in their impact you wouldn't waste the command points. Others, thankfully, there's some great ones in there. The ones where they get to fight again, uh, resurrecting lost models and so on. Great. Maxing out with your flame weapons. Yeah. Blocking, uh, stopping psychic powers coming through. So there are some really good ones, no doubt. Uh, but did they need four pages of strategies? They could have maybe at least cut out one side and had three pages of one side, a bit more potent. That's the Warlord Traits, but uh, a mix there, 50-50. Half, half of them are no good and the others are okay. Warlord Traits. Then add Inspiring Orator is the first one. So this is the Warlord Trait for Junif Yuri. Erita. Erutia. Eruta. However it's pronounced. Inspiring Orator. Well, add one to the warlord, Warlord's leadership characteristic. Friendly order units from this Warlord's leadership 
can use this Warlord's leadership characteristic instead of their own whilst of in six. So bonus to your leadership. Uh, next is Righteous Rage. We're making a charge roll for this Warlord. You can re-roll any or all of the dice. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by this Warlord in the turn in which this Warlord made a charge move. Was charged with form direct intervention. You can re-roll the wound roll. Okay, so that's useful enough. Uh, Executioner of Heretics. Subtract one for leadership characteristic of enemy units while serving six of this Warlord. A lot of leadership modifiers in this codex here, for sure. Uh, Beacon of Faith. At the start of your turn, if this Warlord is on the battlefield, you gain one Miracle Dice. That is for Celestine. So just, just get a bonus dice. Indomitable Belief is the Invan Save Friendly Order Infantry models received from the Shield of Faith abilities improved by one to maximum four plus, whilst their units are in six inches of this Warlord. That's a strong one there, excellent one. Pure of Will. This Warlord can attempt to uh, one additional Psychic Power in your opponent's Psychic Phase. Attempt to deny, yeah, as described in the Shield of Faith ability. Subtract one for the Psychic Test, take over any models whilst within 12 inches of this Warlord. And that is uh, the Warlord trait that's used for St. Catherine. So then you've got, that's your standard ones, then you've got Order Warlord traits here. If you go for one of the Orders, you can select one of these. So Order of Our Martyred Lady, Shield Bearer, is the Warlord trait here. Add one to the Wounds characteristic of this Warlord. Improve this world save characteristic by one to maximum two plus. Yep. Okay, great. Plus one wound, plus one save. Regular armor. Fantastic. Order of the Valorous Heart. Uh, pervious to pain. When this world would lose a wound, five plus signal damage. That's pretty good as well. Order of the Bloody Rose, Blazing Ire. Add one to the attacks characteristic of your world. This world can charge in a turn in which they advanced. Need them to be a bit quicker. Order of the Ebon Chalice, Terrible Knowledge. If this wall is on the battlefield, the Miracle Dice you gain at the start of the first battle round is 6. The start of the first battle round, if your army is battle forged and this wall is on the battlefield, you gain D3 command points. A bit tasty that one as well. Yeah, brilliant that one. Great. Uh, Order of the Argent Shroud, Selfless Heroism. This warlord can perform heroic intervention if, they, if there are any enemy units within 6 instead of 3. And when doing so, can move up to six inches instead of three when performing heroic intervention, so long as they end the move closer to the nearest enemy model. In addition, if this warlord is charged or made a heroic intervention, they always fight first in the fight phase, even if they did not charge. If there are enemy units that have charged or have a similar ability, they alternate choosing units and so on. Order of the Sacred Rose Light of the Emperor. When you perform an act of faith for this warlord, gain one miracle dice. Do not roll for this warlord's devout serenity order conviction. There it is. Yeah, some pretty good ones there, actually. Yeah, Wall of Traits, great. Ah, yes, Relics of the Ecclesiarchy next. I'm going to give you two whole sides here for these. So I, I really like these little bonuses that you can get. Yeah, and remember, you can purchase another one for one command point. So the Blade of Admonition. Model equipped with a blessed blade only. This relic replaces the blessed blade. Gives you plus two strength, eight minus three, three damage. Brilliant. Excellent. Uh, the brazier of eternal flame. Model with a brazier of holy fire only. This relic replaces a brazier of holy fire. When a psychic test is taken from any model within 18, of a model from your army with this relic, subtract two from the result. Okay, some more psychic ability to, to block that there. Wrath of the Emperor next. This is for a bolt pistol. It uh, replaces the bolt pistol. You get range 18 instead. Pistol 4, strength 5, minus 2 and 2 damage. What an upgrade that is. <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah. That is a really good profile for a pistol. Brilliant. Really good. So there you go. That's free of charge because you're paying for a bolt pistol and then you just swap it out for a relic. It's not cost you anything in points. That is an excellent one. So they are... But then you get this is Sisters of Battle, it's all sort of, you know, sort of Roman Catholic sort of style going on here. So you expect the relic section to be really good, uh, and which it is here. These are excellent. Listeners of Faith, once per turn, if a model from your army with this relic is on the battlefield, uh, when you gain a miracle dice, you can re-roll that dice. Once per turn, so it's every turn. Uh, next one, Mantle of Ophelia, Canon S model only. Model this relic as a 3 plus invent save, brilliant. Uh, triptych of the Macarian Crusade. 
And what will this relic would lose a wound? Raw dice, five plus the wound does not last, a bit more resilience. Casket of Penance. Order of the Loris Heart model only, subtract one from the toughest characteristic of enemy units whilst of an inch. A model with this relic. Yeah, useful enough. Maybe. The Book of St. Lucius. Add three to the range of aura abilities of a model with this relic. Iron Surplus of St. Estalia. Estalia. I'm trying my best. I get most of these pronunciations. The model of this relic has a save characteristic of 2+. Plus. In addition, resolve an attack made against that model. Unmodified wound roll of 1, 2, and 3 always fails, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making that attack may have. Excellent. Really good. Especially useful for sisters because their toughness isn't that great, so wound rolls of 2s and 3s are going to come through quite a lot, actually, so that is is that is very helpful. Martyr's Vengeance. Order of our Martyred Lady model equipped with an Infernal Pistol only. The rep the relic replaces an infernal pistol and has the following profile. It becomes range 12, oh no, pistol 1, strength 9, minus 4 and d6 damage, and then it's 2d6 if it's within. No, sorry, it's not. Resolve an attack made by this weapon, roll 2d6 when inflicting damage and discard the load. It's not even, it doesn't even have to get within half range. It's always 2d6 damage, picking the best. Phew. Yeah, excellent relic. About one of the best sets of relics from any of the codexes here. So, excellent. Uh, Annunciation of the Creed, Order of the Ebon Chalice, model with a uh, condemner bolt gun only, uh, then becomes range 24, rapid fire 1, strength 5, minus 2, d3 damage. You can target characters, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. Resolve an attack made by this weapon against a Psyka. Damage has a characteristic of 3. Another good one. There's a lot of good ones, as there's a couple of excellent ones here. Quicksilver Veil, Order of the Argent Shroud, Resolve an attack made by model this relic, subtract one from the hit roll. Okay, and then order of the bloody rose. Model equipped with a chain sword only. You then get uh, plus one strength, AP minus two, two damage. When the bearer fights, it's three additional attacks of this weapon. Excellent, just for a chain sword. And then the light of Saint Agnatha. <laughs> order of the sacred rose, model with a brazier of holy fire only. This relic replaces a brazier of holy fire. Subtract one for the leadership characteristic of enemy demon units whilst uh, they are within six of the model from your army. This relic, in addition, once per phase, when this model fires over, watcher is chosen to shoot with it. Or shoot with it can unleash the light of Saint Agnifa's holy flames. When it does, select one enemy unit within 12. Of that model, if firing overwatch, you must select the charging unit and roll 1d6 on 2 plus. It's d3 mortal wounds. If it's a demon unit, it's d6 mortal wounds. When a model from your army of this relic unleashes the holy flames, after its effects have been resolved, you can discard one miracle dice. If you do not, that model cannot unleash the light of the flames again during the battle. Okay, so it is reusable if you discard miracle dice. So that's the relics. They're pretty good with the relics, actually. Uh, points values, we've covered all of those. And then I did say that I'd go through tactical objectives here. So you get uh, number 11, Slay the Heretic. Score one victory point if at least one enemy character unit was destroyed as a result of an attack made by an Adeptus Minister on unit from your army this turn. So quite straightforward. Armour of Contempt. Rolls. Uh, score one victory point if you made at least one successful save and throw using the Invun save granted by a Shield of Faith ability during the turn. And if you made at least one successful deny the witch test this turn. Yeah, this is quite doable. Uh, reclaim the relic. Roll 1d6 when the tactical objective is generated. Score one victory point if you control the objective marker whose number corresponds to the d6 result. Uh, this turn very straightforward. Trust in the Emperor. I'll score one victory point if you gained three or more miracle dice this turn. D3 victory points if you gained six or more miracle dice this turn. Big incentive to try and harvest those. Uh, the Blood of Martyrs. Score one victory point if at least one Adeptus Adeptus unit from your army was destroyed during this turn. Score D3 victory points if at least one Adeptus Sauritis character unit character unit from your armies destroy this turn. So you get a reward if your own models are slain. Uh, a leap of faith. One victory point if you performed at least one act of faith this turn. Score D3 victory points if you perform three or more. Score D3 plus three victory points instead if you performed six or more acts of faith during this turn. And the book closes. There it is. That's the review then for uh, the new Sisters of Battle Codex. We've had the Beta Codex come along 
we've had units appearing here and there uh, but now finally the full codex with all of the bonuses all the stratagems and traits and so on all complete now in this book so it is an exciting time loads of new models coming through uh, the full codex now for sisters of battles they are officially here and have smashed their way onto the 40k scene so uh, my impression is the codex seems fine i think that seems great here uh, it's can't see any problem at all. Some great units, great varieties. Worry perhaps it's going to be like, a, a, you know, like eight units in total, and you'd be limited on HQs. But Games Workshop are giving a, a big, big spread uh, of units and combinations that you can go for. So that's good news. Stratagems, I think half of them aren't particularly good, but the other half, are fine. Some amazing relics and warlord traits as well. So all in all, uh, it looks like a pretty good codex for sure. But leave your own comments and feedback uh, in the comment section below. As, and uh, leave your own impressions there uh, in the comments section. So there it is, that's the review. Uh, maybe we'll get to see the new sisters on the channel. Uh, we'll watch and see what happens and see who's able to paint some up and we'll use them in some of our games. But they'll be welcome on the channel. It'll be a great faction to see in action for sure. It's not Space Marine. These are uh, an entirely different playstyle and rules and so on. But that's the review. Uh, thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy ahead of time. Check out Gaming Figures for your discount 40k. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in next time.